Okay, so we're going to make sauerkraut today. And, um, yeah, please go... Uh, uh, there are links underneath um, to go to my two other videos on sauerkraut. Uh, one is about the uh, bacterial progression, uh, which makes sauerkraut. And, you know, it tells you what temperature you need to make it, etc. And the other one is about the medicinal effects. Very interesting. So I, I uh, thoroughly recommend those two videos. Um... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so let's have some, some tips. I've already started to make some, as you can see here, some tips. Number one, um, the jars, when you clean them, always make sure you've got one already assembled. Um, because uh, when you take these wires and stuff off, if you're as stupid as I am, <laughs> it can be a bit of a puzzle uh, to put the, the lid back on. So keep one out so you can copy it, yeah? That's, that's uh, number one. Number two, um, when you clean, the, uh, clean your jar, uh, you need to pour some hot water in it, get some hot water in it. Um, and this is, um, uh, this, you need this tip for, we'll, we'll sh I'll show you something else in a minute, and you'll need this tip for that as well. So, uh, when you pour the hot water in, always have about an inch of water in the bottom, and you can pour boiling water straight in, as long as you pour it so it hits the middle, yeah? So it's, it hits the center of the water, and you can pour boiling water straight up and it won't crack the won't crack the jar otherwise it will crack if you pour boiling water straight in it'll crack immediately okay so that's number two number three uh the best temperature to make sauerkraut and you'll see this in my uh, second video on sauerkraut you'll see that um the best temperature to make sauerkraut is 18 degrees c which is 64 degrees 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, what you need is this cool box. And by the way, uh, for Indian, any Indians watching, and people um, who, live in, um, uh, who live in Queensland, Australia, where it's very hot, um, yeah, in, in Queensland it can be 35 degrees C regularly, and that you, you'll get terrible, you know, you won't make good sauerkraut. The same in India, it's so, so hot. Uh, they tried to make uh, sauerkraut on a commercial basis, but it just didn't work in India because it's too hot. But you can make it. This is how you can make it. And in India, uh, see these cabbages. If you're watching from India, there's nothing, there's, there's not, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with the color balance. <laughs> this is a white cabbage, which we have in the UK. And you don't have these in India. You have green cabbage. It looks exactly the same, except that it's green. Um, so you can make sauerkraut with green cabbage, no problem. It'll make perfectly good sauerkraut. We usually, we, you can make sauerkraut with any cabbage, really. We tend to use white cabbage. I make it with red cabbage. We'll, that's another story. We'll come on to that in a minute. But anyway, if you're in India, um, put these in your freezer, these bricks in your freezer. You'll probably want about 10 of these and keep five in the freezer and then you can rotate them, yeah? So um, you put your sauerkraut, your sauerkraut in the, in the cool box, yeah? Put your sauerkraut in the cool box and then put your bricks straight out of the freezer, put these in. Uh, you can put about three, if you make a lot of sauerkraut in one go, you can put three jars in and uh, with your with your thingies, yeah. I, I, if, if you are in India, I really recommend making sauerkraut. It's fantastic for your health, particularly good for your colon. Have a look at my, um, 
my third video on sauerkraut on the medicinal effects. Um, you'll see the wonderful things sauerkraut uh, can do for you. Okay. Um, the other thing is, oh yeah, yeah, we need, and you'll need this, one of these as well. I'll put that down a minute. You'll need one of these, which is, I've got two of them here and I've got them tangled up. Uh, yeah, you'll need one of these. I don't know if you can see there. It's at the moment, it's 23 degrees, 23.3 degrees C here. Um, the batteries in these last about three months. Um, and, um, you know, if you want to stop the battery going down, just take the batteries out at the back if you're not using it. Anyway, so you put that, you put this little toggle thing here, that measures the temperature. If I put my thumb on, my fingers on there, it's going to go up. Yeah, we'll see the temperature go up, 28, 29, 30, blah, 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 it's going up. Okay, so, yeah, put that in, that... Um, yeah, with your sauerkraut in there, and just put this, uh, just put this on the outside, there we go, like that, yeah, so you can, and you'll probably want to have a look at this twice a day, once in the morning, one in, once in the evening, and um, yeah, you can rotate the, um, the, the, uh, rotate these thingies, yeah, so, if it's if it's if this is saying say 22 or 23 degrees, if you're in India, uh, rotate the um, I don't know what these are called actually frisnet this frizzet this is anyway I don't know what the technical term for these is but anyway so um, yeah so yeah when the temperature gets up on the temperature J gauge so remember 18 degrees C and um, 64.5 degrees centigrade that is okay the other thing is if you're in the you know if you're in northern europe or northern usa and it's very cold in winter you know say it's only 11 degrees c and you haven't got central heating or something um you can put your you can do the same thing put your sauerkraut in there and you'll need two jars like this of water two jars of hot water um, pour it right up to the top with boiling water uh, so two jars in there same thing put the top on put your temperature gauge thingy in there okay and you'll probably want to renew uh, pour the boil the pour the water out into your kettle boil it up again you'll probably want to do that twice a day once in the morning and once in the evening, when you get up, you know, the, temp your, your, the temperature thing will probably read about 16 or something. You put, put your, your um, things with boiling water in again, put the top on. After about an hour, it will probably get up to about 22 degrees C. And, but, you know, the average will be about 18 degrees C. If you keep the sauerkraut at 18 degrees C, it really makes fabulous sauerkraut. And you'll see in, see in um, my video my second video on the um, on the process the bacterial process the bacterial progression you'll see why that works so well okay put that out of the way we can put that out of the way now okay what other tips yeah um so uh, sauerkraut is very handy for um you know uh, for making a meal very quickly a healthy meal um, you know, like when you're, if you've had a hard day and you really don't feel like cooking, please don't eat processed food. Don't go out, don't go to a takeaway and don't, uh, you know, don't get one of those ready-made meals and put it in a, in a microwave. That is a really the quick route to, you know, to uh, being dependent on doctors. And you really don't want that. Um, they'll kill you. So, um, yeah, you can put some um, some sauerkraut in a bowl with some um, uh, with a avocado pear and some nuts, and then I like this stuff, which is engavita, um, which is uh, yeast flakes. Loads of 
uh, vitamin B in this, particularly B6. It's a really good hit of uh, B vitamin. Tastes great as well. Tastes a little bit like Parmesan cheese. I prefer this to Parmesan cheese. This, my videos are all about the Senule diet, how to eat on the Senule diet, my supercharged version of the Senule diet. And, um, yeah, so, uh, I lost my train of thought now. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's, if you want, you know, a healthy meal, a quick meal, takes two minutes, a bit of sauerkraut in a bowl, some avocado, pear, uh, some nuts, uh, stir it all around with a bit of Engavita yeast flakes, uh, and you're good to go. And it's delicious. It's delicious. Takes two minutes to make, yeah. And that's that's really that's a really healthy meal. So okay, so let's make um, sauerkraut. Now I'm making it with black radish. Uh, black radish. Uh, you'll see a video. I'll put a link underneath. Uh, to my healthiest breakfast ever. Uh, black radish stimulates bile. So if you have black radish with some, uh, with, with some, um, you know, with, with oil or fat and um, some beta carotene, sorry, you, you don't need to have uh, fat or oil, you just need the, the, um, the black radish. If you have uh, carrots or beetroot, which got lots of black radish in, uh, which you've got lots of beta carotene in, and you have some black radish, it will transform the beta carotene into retinol, which is the animal form of vitamin D, uh, uh, animal form of vitamin A, sorry, vitamin A. Um, beta carotene on its own won't become uh, vitamin A. And doing like that, you can never overdose on the retinol because once you've reached the optimum amount of retinol, uh, your body will simply stop transforming it. So this is great, you know, to, to have at the end of a meal and to, you know, and it cleans, it, trans, it stimulates bile. So bile, when you, when, you, when you produce bile, it cleans out the liver, it cleans out all the toxins in your liver. So this is really good for two things. Number one, to get optimum vitamin A, and number two, to detoxify. Okay, so, uh, and it tastes great with, um, with uh, sauerkraut, I promise you, it tastes really, it's really, um, uh, really food made for the gods. Okay, so another thing we've got, um, I use red cabbage. Uh, red cabbage has a thing in it which is really good for your prostate. It's the same thing that's in uh, passata, uh, which is, um, uh, or... Um, concentrated uh, potato, uh, concentrated tomato, tomato paste, passata, all those things, got lots in it. That's why uh, men in, in Napoli, where they eat nothing but, um, but uh, tomatoes, uh, you know, everything with tomatoes, men in Napoli don't have prostate cancer. So I, I'm 70, so I need to be careful of my prostate. So I eat um, lots of red cabbage, I also eat um, one uh, watermelon, uh, half a watermelon a day, which has also got the stuff in it. So, uh, right, so let's, let's make some sauerkraut. Um, you'll want to remove the outer leaves, because the outer leaves have got all kinds of, they've got millions of bacteria that we don't want in the sauerkraut, yeah? Or you can, you can wash them, you know. Um, Halerson, who is the god of uh, sauerkraut making, says you should wash the outer leaves because of that. But he was referring really to commercial production, uh, which doesn't really concern us. Um, so I think it's just easier just to take the outer leaves off here. Yeah? So take these outer leaves off. Now we're going to make um, our sauerkraut with um, whey. How do you make whey? Well, what you do, you see I've got some already made here. Uh, what you do is you, uh, you get a strainer like this. And I've used uh, two cartons of um, yogurt. Make sure the yogurt says live culture on, on the carton, yeah? On the, otherwise, it won't, um, it won't work otherwise. It must be live culture, yeah? So make sure it says live culture. Uh, so, so then put your, 
pour your yogurt into here and leave it overnight. It, it happens very quickly, but you know, overnight is fine. Or even in the daytime, in a couple of hours, you know, in a few hours, it'll separate out. And in here, you'll get um, cottage cheese. This was made from yogurt yesterday. So uh, we put it in uh, chef's muslin. Okay, this is how to make whey, uh, how to separate yogurt into whey and cottage cheese. So um, we pour the yogurt into here. This is she uh, chef's muslin. Uh, you can use cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is probably a bit too coarse, uh, but you could double it up. Yeah, you could double the cheesecloth to make it a bit finer. But there we go. So that's lovely cottage cheese. That is absolutely delicious, but I can't eat that. I don't eat that. I, I, I follow the Senulé diet. So if you're on the Senulé diet, just throw it away or give it to someone. Yeah, Give it to someone who's not on the diet. It is absolutely delicious. We'll get rid of that. So cottage cheese on the top and whey at the bottom. The cottage cheese tastes wonderful, tastes fabulous. But we're following the Senulé diet, yeah, and uh, so, um, you know, if you're following the Senulé diet, we don't eat any dairy. So give the cottage cheese away, give it to somebody who's not on the Senulé diet, they'll appreciate it, or just chuck it away, yeah, I chuck mine away. Um, okay, the, the, way, the way is, uh, you know... Um, is a little bit of a slip up for the Senulé diet, but I don't think it makes any, you know, a little bit of whey won't make any difference. Um, and it's, it makes a fantastic sauerkraut. So this is Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. And um, this, this, is, um, this is a great book for health nuts. Uh, but it's not really strictly senile. Um She talks about making bread, especially sourdough bread. Uh, on the senile diet, we don't eat bread. We don't eat wheat. Um, we eat only uh, brown rice, um, brown rice, um, buckwheat, and um, buckwheat and quinoa. Those are the only things that are allowed, only grains that are allowed on the senile diet. So, yeah, and there's things about uh, cooking at fairly high temperature. We don't cook at anything above 110 degrees C. Uh, I've forgotten what that is in Fahrenheit. Well, we'll, we'll put that up on the video, you know, when we edit it. Um, okay, so let's have a look at Sally's recipe for sauerkraut. And this is a great recipe. Uh, I always make sauerkraut with this recipe. Now, the, the proper way to make sauerkraut is just with, with um, salt. Okay, just salt and nothing else. Um, according to Pedersen, the god of sauerkraut making, uh, inoculating uh, doesn't make very good sauerkraut. But I've, I made this with, I made two batches. I made one batch with whey and one the canonical whey with just salt to compare the taste. And the whey was much nicer, much less salty, um, really much nicer. So uh, it does work. So here is her recipe. So one medium cabbage, you want um, a tablespoonful of caraway seeds. We've got caraway seeds here. A uh, tablespoonful of sea salt and four tablespoonfuls of whey. That's a medium cabbage. Okay, so um, yeah, let's crack on. So I think, what's this? I think that's a medium cabbage, isn't it? Maybe a little bit bigger than a medium cabbage. So we want to um, get rid of the core. So we need to slice it up. And uh, where's the core gone? Here we go. A bit less of a core with the red cabbages, I think. Yeah, it won't matter if you get the core in, in your sauerkraut, actually, apart from taste. Um, it'll um, work perfectly well, but we'll get rid of the core. Okay, so a little bit of core won't, won't harm, but best if you can get rid of it. So, get these ready to put through the Vitamix.
You want a really sharp knife, yeah? Um, I've sharpened these. Where's my knife sharpener? I bought this. Yeah. I use this to sharpen the knife, this little thingy here. Works really well. Uh, let me show you. This, this knife's clean. So you just sharpen it like this. Um, yeah, where can I do this? Uh, so sharpen it like this. And it works, it works really well, gets it really sharp. Okay, so we got a sharp knife, we cut our cabbage. Now, um, this is a magic mix, let me show you this. So, oh yeah, another tip, with you always remember this thing in here, if you put this thing in here and you, you haven't used the magic mix for six months or so and you get it out and you'll be looking for this and it'll be in here and it doesn't look as if it's, you know, it just looks as if it's the standard top, yeah? You don't realise it's in here and you turn your kitchen upside down looking for the bloody thing but it's in here all the time. <laughs> okay, so, you know, just if, you know, I, I, um, I don't think, you're, you're probably not as stupid as I am but, uh, you know, for anyone who's as stupid as I am, there we go. So this, so um, these are the, here's the buttons for the Magic Mix, and it won't start until it's fully assembled, and only, uh, it'll only start when it's assembled properly. So here's the blade I'm using, that's the blade I'm using, okay, uh, you can get other, bl other blades, you might want to experiment with blades. Um, you want your sauerkraut as, fine as, as finely shredded as possible. I think if, if this blade, you know, it's, it's not too bad. It makes fairly good sauerkraut. Okay, now it's fully assembled. You can see I can turn it on now. Okay. So... So if you live in India and you're making my sauerkraut, it will be green cabbage, okay? You can't, I, I don't think you can get red cabbage in India. But green cabbage is fine. It works, it goes through, it goes through really fast. Yeah, I mean, slicing the, um, the cabbage by hand, really laborious. All the videos I've seen on making sauerkraut on YouTube, they're all slicing by hand. Oh, very laborious. I like to make loads, loads of sauerkraut in one go. I make, you know, three or maybe four of these jars, keeps for ages. Sauerkraut, you don't need to keep it cool, you know, in a fridge or anything like that. You can if you want to, but, you know, it takes about a month, a month to ferment properly at 18 degrees C. At 18 degrees C, one month, and you've got perfect sauerkraut. Okay, if you leave it, I don't know, if it, you leave it out in the heat, it does get a bit mushy. Still perfectly edible, uh, but you, you probably, you know, after a month's time, you want to leave it somewhere cool. It'll keep for ages, you know, it'll keep for years, really. Uh, a year is probably the, one year is probably the limit, you know, for nice tasting sauerkraut. But it needs to be somewhere cool. You could, you, you know, if you've got a big fridge, you could put it in the fridge. But, you know, I, I wouldn't bother, you know, only if, if it's getting a bit mushy, put it in the fridge. So... Here we go. So, by happy circumstance, one um, medium cabbage is about one Magi Mix full, okay? So, um, if you've forgotten to, to um, you know, if you've forgotten what cabbage you put in, you know, what sort of size the cabbage was that you put in your Magi Mix, one Magi Mix full is about one medium cabbage. So again, you can. So. Uh, 
so then you know then you know uh, for the one mix one matching mix full you need one tablespoon full of salt and four tablespoonsfuls of whey So, um, there's my gloves, put my gloves on. Come on, gloves, go on. Oh, these are powder free gloves. Pain in the ass to put on. Get powdered gloves, much easier. Uh, they leave a bit of talc on your hands when you take them off, but okay, so, okay, so um, this is a bit too much in one go for the bowl to put the salt and um, whey in, so we'll divide it up into half, yeah, half, half, there we go, so, um, now salt, we want to be using uh, this French sea salt, sel de Guérande. This is genuine sea salt. If you, if you buy sea salt and it's white, it's not really proper sea salt. It's been refined. But we want this, it's got all the minerals in, yeah? So it's grey. Proper sea salt is grey. Sel de Guerlande. You can get it on Amazon, both Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk. So one tablespoonful of that. Um, so I'll put half a tablespoonful in here half in here. I'll put a little bit more in, possibly just a tiny bit more because it's fairly big, a bit, bit more than medium maybe. So I'll put just a, oh yeah, just put a little bit more. And the whey, so it's four tablespoonfuls. So it's two, two tablespoonfuls in this, two tablespoonfuls in that. Um, now I'm going to put Another tablespoonful in for good luck. Okay, so I'm going to use six tablespoonfuls. Okay. Getting a bit messy here. So now you've got to beat the crap out of this. Okay. Beat this to death. And it'll get all the juices out. It'll mix, mix the salt in, brings the juice out. And, oh, I've forgotten the black radish. Yeah, black radish as well we want. So, let's put some black radish in here. Okay, that's what black radish looks like. Okay, the black radish, what I've done, I've scrubbed it very carefully with a, a, a nail brush, given it a good scrub, and then I've put it in hydrogen peroxide. You want to put anything you eat raw, put it in hydrogen peroxide, and it'll kill any bugs. Hydrogen peroxide at 13 degrees, 13% um, hydrogen peroxide. You get it in a five liter, uh, five liter, um, uh, flask here yeah. and um, yeah put it in a bowl now hydrogen peroxide you must be careful if you've got kids put the hydrogen peroxide out of their reach okay don't put it in a in a jug in the fridge yeah because it looks just like water someone could plug it straight down and it would kill them okay if you get if you splash hydrogen peroxide on you um, it just stings a bit yeah if you get any on you just put it under the you know put your put the skin under the tap wash it off but uh, yeah it stings a bit that's all a bit like like a, st a stinging nettle um, but you know really be careful keep it out of the reach of kids uh, you know get a, a cupboard you can lock 
uh, to keep the hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so that's what I've done. Put it in hydrogen peroxide for about five or ten minutes, and then I've rinsed it, yeah, and dried it off with a with a, um, a paper towel. Okay, so we'll crack on with this. Oh, it's not working now. It'll only work if you. There we go. Yeah, if it's not locked in properly, it won't switch on. Um, there are lots of different uh, food processors, of course. You might not have a, you might have another different kind of food processor, but they all work the same way, really. Um, uh, you've, there's a particular make in India, which if I've forgotten, but my, my Indian uh, video editor told me about it. I can't remember. But that will work fine to make sauerkraut. Okay, so that's what it looks like, looks really nice, yeah? So, um, you don't have to make sauerkraut with black radish, of course, you make sauerkraut on its own. Uh, you can make it with all kinds of things. You can put some ginger in. Uh, fantastic. Tastes fantastic with ginger. There we go. So, um, yeah, so I'll need to put a bit of, a uh, bit more salt in for the black radish and a bit more whey. So, where's the spoon? Yeah. So, I think we'll put maybe one, one more tablespoonful of whey. And, um, yeah, just a little, I think, just a little bit, bit of salt for the, for the black radish, just a tiny bit, yeah. There we go. Nope. So, beat this to death. See, I've got a, a big piece here. Didn't go through the matchy mix properly. That's fine, that will ferment perfectly well. It'll taste perfectly okay. Okay, put that in our jar. I've got some pincer thingies, I've forgotten to bring them out. So, yeah, you can do this with pincer thingies much better uh, than with your hands, but never mind, you can do it with your hands just as well. So, push this down. Now, you want to push it right down until you get liquid coming up. And the liquid needs to cover the sauerkraut, yeah? So it needs to be tamped right down. Let me put this in the middle so you can see. So tamp this right down. Yeah, can you see the juice coming through? Yeah, juice there. So, uh, where are we here? So here's the other bowl. Okay, so can you see? So 
So we need to tamp this right down. Again, so the moisture comes right up to the top. Okay, it's uh, the middle of May here uh, in 2020. I'm making this during the lockdown. Okay, so um, it's pretty hot here. So I think, uh, yeah, the lockdown is a disaster, totally unnecessary. Um, I'm going to make um, a video tomorrow about this. Okay, I'll need, you'll need, we'll, I'll need to make a little bit more. We want it almost up to the top, not quite up to the top. A little bit of, bit of space at the top, yeah? So, yeah, the COVID-19. No need to put anyone on a ventilator. And no need for anyone to die from any acute infection, whether that's bacterial, viral, or parasitical infection. There's a very easy solution to stop what happens when you get the acute the acute infection you get pneumonia you get sepsis and um, uh, you get acute respiratory um, acute res distress syndrome or ARDS for short vitamin C intravenous uh, will stop, stop all of those. There's plenty of studies in medical journals which show that, and people have used it to put, to put these, to stop those things, to prevent uh, people dying from acute infection, and it works. You need to use a large amount, usually a large amount of intravenous uh, vitamin C, about 12 grams, at least 12 grams you need to use, and possibly more. If the patient is not responding, you give them more. That's, so that's 12 grams over a day. Yeah, so, you know, that's not uh, 12 grams in one go. That's spread out through, throughout a 24-hour period. And that works every time. Also, you need to have uh, the people who die, uh, the, people, the, the, the three types of infection, there's mild, moderate and acute. People with mild and moderate have adequate vitamin D. The people who, ha who are, you know, the, have the acute infection have inadequate amounts of vitamin D. So that's the other thing. You need to take plenty of vitamin D if you don't want to die from COVID-19. Uh, take, and if you, if you, vitamin D is low. If you're a black person in the UK or in the US where you're not getting enough, you know, you've got black skin, you'll be very vitamin D deficient. Even if you go out in the summer in the UK, you're not getting enough vitamin D. Even if you go out in the sun, you know, go out in the park, go to the beach, you're not getting enough, you, because of your, the melanin in your skin, you're not getting enough vitamin D. So take vitamin D supplement. If you think you're deficient, take... Um, 15,000 RUs. RUs mean, means international units, okay? It's a stupid uh, way of measuring, but anyway, we're stuck with it. But take 15,000 RUs. You can do that every day for about 10 days, and they'll go, then go to 10,000 RUs. Um, the real expert on vitamin D is Professor Hollick, okay? And he says you can take 10,000 RUs for months, okay, without doing any harm. Without, without acute toxicity. Uh, you know, you might, well, after six months, say, uh, you might want to uh, dial the dose down or get yourself, uh, you, can get, you can get measured, you can get it, you, you know, you can get, the, get your vitamin D um, measured. Um, so it takes about three months, well, it takes a few, few weeks or, or months to get the, you know, to get your body up to adequate levels of vitamin D. So start now, yeah, they're, they're talking about a second or third wave. Um, so make sure you've got adequate vitamin D so you can resist it, yeah. This whole crisis is totally manufactured. It's total bollocks, okay, absolutely no need for it. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll be making a video about it tomorrow. So make sure you get plenty of vitamin D. So I think that wraps it up here. Um, yeah, hopefully my video cameras have recorded all that and um, yeah, the microphone is on. Is the microphone on? Yeah, the microphone's on. Okay, so cut.